Hello everybody, this is Storm Clouds Gathering with AMTV. The date is September 6, 2011. And today I'm going to talk about the underlying motives for the ongoing campaign of destabilization and regime change in the Middle East by the U.S. and its NATO allies. Now, if you have the habit of watching mainstream media and just accepting what they tell you at face value, then you probably don't see any pattern in events that have been unfolding in the last several years in the Middle East. But there is a pattern. To see it, it helps to look at it on a map. The red represents the countries where the U.S. and NATO have succeeded in completely toppling governments through outright aggression. And in this category, we have Afghanistan, Iraq, and now Libya. The green represents the countries which have been destabilized during the Arab Spring. Probably the most important in this category is Egypt due to the fact that it did actually result in a regime change and also due to the presence of the Suez Canal, which I'm going to talk about later. The countries colored in orange, Yemen, Pakistan, and Somalia represent countries where we're actively bombing using unmanned aerial drones. And the countries in yellow are the countries which we are directly threatening with military force and with sanctions. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there who believe that the United States had nothing to do with the Arab Spring rebellions. Um, I'm going to put some links below. You should go and check out. Now, while I'm not presenting any of these links as proof that the United States was involved in the Arab Spring rebellions, it does indicate that the United States has invested a significant amount of money in the capacity to manipulate social uprisings through social media. Now, I'm also quite aware of the fact that this might seem very contradictory to people because the United States had been for many years uh, holding up um, the Egyptian regime, even though the Egyptian regime was known to be torturing its citizens and abusing um, civil rights. But if you do a little research on American spawned regime changes, you'll actually find that this is par for the course. A good obvious example of this would be Saddam Hussein, which we funded, we armed, even to the point of giving them chemical weapons. And then when it was convenient to us, we actually turned on them and invaded. Now, while Mubarak was generally viewed as friendly to American interest, if you do a little bit of digging, you'll discover that tensions had been developing specifically in relation to Syria, which is interesting because it's starting to look more and more like Syria is next in line for an American-led regime change. Now, I've added this pink line here um, to illustrate what I think is at stake. Now, this path which crosses through Egypt at the Suez Canal is the most direct route from Western Europe and the United States into the East. And what you'll notice is that almost every country that's on this route is in the process of being destabilized right now, in one way or another. Now, you might ask why that would be the case, and I can't give you a definitive answer, but this is my take on it. In the event of a World War III type scenario, the United States is going to want to be able to move throughout any of these regions unhindered by governments who aren't particularly friendly to the United States. Now, if you look at the result of the war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq, um, it's pretty clear that the United States has rendered them completely incapable of defending themselves, uh, much less actually mounting an offensive against anybody. This is why I believe that the real powers that be don't care whether Afghanistan is in total chaos or if Iraq is in total chaos when we leave. It is, in fact, in their interest to leave those countries in chaos. As long as the countries in this corridor from the west to the east are unable to defend themselves, are unable to mount an attack, then the United States and NATO are free to move from west to east without hindrance. And these established positions in Iraq, Afghanistan, and most likely in the future Libya give the United States very strong footholds in the region which they can use to launch further actions into Africa and farther east. My question to you guys, which country do you think the United States will invade next? Thanks for listening, guys. If you want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to AMTV, and be sure to check out my personal channel as well. You guys have a good day.